Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel devoted to hiking, backpacking, camping, and the gear that goes with it. If that is something you are into, why don't you click subscribe and we will get on with it. Today I want to talk to you about what I'm wearing for winter. Winter apparel is always somewhat difficult because on the one hand, it's cold, so you would think, ah, I should wear warm clothing. But for the hiker, the problem is, once you get going, you are going to generate a lot of heat internally, and that is going to sweat you out of your clothes if you wore clothes that were meant for just kind of hanging around in cold temperatures. Now, common wisdom is to dress in layers, and I have already done a video on that, so I won't go into all of the theory behind layers, but the basic idea is pretty straightforward. It's that rather than just getting one big winter coat or something to keep you warm, which is going to be almost instantly useless as soon as you start hiking and warm up too much, you want to dress in layers so that you can more easily control the heat that your body is retaining. But an additional challenge for hikers is that you don't want to be carrying a whole bunch of stuff on your back, and so you're wanting not only multiple layers, but multiple lightweight layers, so that you don't find yourself having to pack a whole bunch more than you need. Another challenge for hikers is that unless you just find that perfect balance between the cold outside and the heat that you are generating, you are going to sweat. And if you sweat out your first layer, and then you decide to take off that outer layer because it's getting too warm, guess what? Now you're risking hypothermia. So good quality layers are very important for backpacking, especially in the cold of winter. Number one, you want them to be fairly lightweight. It's always better to have several lightweight layers that you can stack rather than one big heavy one where it becomes all or nothing. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your clothing is as breathable as possible while retaining heat, and also that it can wick moisture away, especially if it is one of the layers that is closer to your body. A clothing's wicking ability refers to how it removes moisture off of your skin. When you couple that with a breathable layer that allows water moisture to escape, you've got a pretty solid system. Now, no system is perfect. Breathable layers are often not very breathable. Wicking layers are not gonna keep you from sweating. It's all kind of a balancing act. At the end of the day, if you are hiking, you are probably going to be wet, either from rain or from sweat, and you just sort of have to mitigate that as best as possible. So here are the layers that I currently have that I am going to be using as I hike this winter. The first is the shirt that I have on right here. This is the Mountain Hardware Photon. This is a thin base layer, long sleeve, even has the little spacer here in the uh, wristband to keep the sleeves down for when you're changing your clothes, you're not gonna be having to roll your sleeves up and down all the time. It also has a hood. So if you're just looking for a little bit of extra protection, you can get it right from here. Now, as I said, this is a base layer. It is actually fairly cool, believe it or not. In fact, a couple of weeks ago when I climbed my first 13er mountain, it was actually fairly warm. It was extremely sunny. There was just a ton of exposure. And because I burn easily, I not only did sunscreen, but I wanted something that would cover my neck and the side of my face. Now, unfortunately on that trip, I couldn't find the cape to my sun cap so I was left with nothing but a hat and a brim, and that left my ears, the back of my head, and my neck exposed. So I actually wore this with the hood up and climbed the mountain successfully and comfortably and did not burn one square inch of skin. The Photon hoodie uses what they call a wick Q moisture wicking material. Keeps you cool and dry. And although it retails for about $75, it is often on sale for about 50, and I actually got it for about half of that on a special sale. Now, there are two more layers that I typically consider as a basic system, and that is a insulating or a warmth layer, as well as a waterproof layer. When it comes to warmth, a popular choice is a fleece jacket. These are very soft, very comfortable, very warm, and they retain their insulating abilities when they're wet. So if you happen to get into a situation where this is all you have and you get maybe a light rain, not gonna be a huge problem. The other nice thing about fleece is that these are relatively inexpensive. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a good fleece jacket. The bad news with fleece is that it is big and heavy. It does not 
compact very well. You're not going to get this in a little tiny stuff sack and put it in the pocket of a jacket or of your backpack. It's kind of like trying to pack a beach towel. The other thing is that fleece is heavy. So while this might be a really comfortable jacket for hanging around the campfire or going car camping, for backpacking it really lacks some pretty critical features, namely compressibility and being lightweight, and that makes it a difficult choice for a warm flare for me. Instead, I chose to go with a puffy jacket. Much like sleeping bags or sleeping quilts, a puffy jacket relies on trapped air inside the material of the jacket to get heated up by your body and keep you warm. The heat is trapped in baffles that are puffed out, hence the word puffy, by some kind of material inside usually either down feathers or some kind of synthetic blend. And, once again, there are pluses and minuses to both materials. Down, which is the more popular and the much more expensive option, gives you the most compressibility and it is the lightest weight. So you can be kept very warm by a very lightweight, very compressible jacket. The downside, see what I did there? is that it is very expensive compared to synthetics and it loses its insulating power if it gets wet. So if you've got a down jacket and the rain hits before you can get a rainproof layer over the top of it, you could be in serious trouble because it's going to take a long time to dry out and it's basically just going to turn into a big sponge. Synthetic material, on the other hand, is usually quite a bit less expensive and it continues to perform when it's wet, although not as well as fleece. It's not going to be as lightweight, it's not going to compress as much as down, but it still does a far better job than fleece in those areas. What I have right here is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Shadow. The Ghost Shadow is basically the synthetic version of the Ghost Whisperer, which is one of the most popular puffies on the trail. The Ghost Whisperer weighs less, compresses more, but it costs upwards of $350 or $400. The Ghost Shadow, on the other hand, retails for about $250, and I got it for less than half of that on a special sale one Christmas. It's got two big inner pockets, I mean, that come all the way practically to my elbow, and two zippered pockets along the side. It's got a drawstring along the bottom to keep drafts out, and the whole thing stuffs into its own pocket for easy carry. This jacket also has a hood, so if I've really got to get my head warm, especially if I am sleeping at night, I can actually just throw both of these on, and now I've got double insulation for my head. The nice thing about this is that because I am a pretty hot sleeper, I can just take these hoods off if I don't need them, and it keeps me from having to carry a heavier quilt or sleeping bag that I can use to wrap around my head. So again, it's all about layers, it's all about modular pieces, and flexibility when it comes to hiking. For my waterproof layer, I will typically just hike with a Frog Togs ultralight jacket. This jacket weighs five ounces, and even with the full rain suit, only runs about 20 bucks. It's a thru-hiker favorite because it just weighs almost nothing, and although it lacks features, I mean, it doesn't have pit zips or even pockets, it's so lightweight and it's so cheap that it's just really difficult to argue against having one in your kit. It is 100% waterproof because it is not a breathable fabric at all. This is really just a shell to keep over the rest of your clothes. So the nice thing about it is that if you're hiking and it's not really all that cold, you can just put it over a t-shirt or something and not have to worry about sweat now. However, if I'm going to be out in winter conditions and I want something a little more hardy and with a few more bells and whistles, I go with the Outdoor Research Foray. This is a Gore-Tex jacket which means it is utilizing pretty much the highest tech material out there that will keep you dry, both from rain and from sweat. The Outdoor Research Foray sounds like a lot of other really good jackets, like the Marmot Minimalist or some other jackets of that kind of quality. But one thing that really sets the Foray out as a very different kind of jacket are the pit zips. Now, most of your high-tech rain jackets have pit zips. Basically, a zipper that comes down, lets a little bit of the air out, so that you can keep dry, but also keep a little more cool than you would if you left the jacket completely sealed all the time. The difference with the foray is that its pit zips go all the way down to the bottom of the jacket. So I can literally open up the entire side of the jacket 
and still keep relatively dry from rain if it's just kind of falling straight down. That also allows me to release heat very quickly by simply puffing the jacket out and blowing any heat out that I have accumulated. But it gets even better because if I zip these zippers up, there is another zipper at the bottom of these giant pit zips, or side zips I guess I should call them, that allows me to zip up instead, and although both pieces are still going to hang down and keep me dry, I can literally just lift up the entire front of the jacket, and once again, heat goes away. It's almost like having a poncho instead of a rain jacket on. Now, you do pay for these features a little bit when it comes to weight. This jacket is 16 ounces, so you're looking at a pound added to your kit, if this is what you choose to carry with you. But if you not only want to stay dry from rain, but also dry from sweat, and you want to be able to very finely control how much heat the jacket retains, it's really hard to beat the foray. The foray is gonna set you back about $175 retail. Again, I always shop deals. The three things that I have shown you in this video together would run $500 retail. But try to keep in mind that this is some very specialized gear for some very specialized activity that you're going to be doing in a situation where a failure could be life-threatening. All right, I hope this has been an informative video for you. If you have found value in this video, would you mind clicking like? And again, if you are not a subscriber, I would love to have you. Click subscribe. Click the bell so I can tell you when next videos come out. And until that happens, I'm Doug. This is Backcountry Pilgrim. Take it easy.